as someone who has been reading Marvel comics, watching Marvel shows, watching Marvel movies, playing the games my whole life, Marvel Snap's kind of wild, right? One of the most surreal things about Marvel Snap is the fact that as a Marvel fan my whole life, I'm seeing other people be introduced to these characters for the first time through this game. Like, that is bizarre. People are meeting characters like Stegron or Zabu or Master Mold, and now they know who those characters are. They've never been in movies, they've never been in shows, or at least not shows that they've watched. And the fact that some of these characters are becoming like characters people really like, it's pretty wild. I do think some of these characters have been elevated slightly by Marvel Snap, like their profile. So that now if Nimrod shows up in a book like he is currently in the X-Men books, people are recognizing like, ooh, that's a guy from Marvel Snap. He was the season pass card, so that must mean he's pretty important. Like that as a concept is wild to me. But that does create a problem because a lot of these people are being introduced to these characters for the first time and sometimes while the character can be very cool the card is not and this is creating a negative association i don't think this is going to be a situation where like oh nobody wants to read books about this character anymore because they hate the card right i don't think this is going to kill like the punisher or something like this but i am upset that one of my favorite marvel comics deep cut characters has had a pretty bad marvel snap run in fact he has what might be the worst marvel snap card and of course, I'm talking about Guido Caracella, a.k.a. the strong guy. So if you're not familiar with the character, real quick introduction. From the costume, it should be pretty clear this guy's an X-Men adjacent character. He was introduced in the book New Mutants, although he was not part of the New Mutants because that was kids and he was clearly an adult. His thing was he was a bodyguard for a mutant singer named Lila Cheney. But his big time to shine came when he was brought on to the second, I believe, incarnation of X-Factor. Basically, X-Factor was weird. It was like the first class X-Men again, so it was like the further adventures of all those guys. And then the team got changed to Val Cooper, a government operative, putting together a team of mutants who would fight crime as X-Factor. So this was Polaris, Multiple Man, Havoc was the leader of the team. Havoc and Polaris were kind of both the leader of the team. Wolfsbane and Strong Guy. Quicksilver was there, but he was never like a member of the team. He just wouldn't stop showing up. So... He's, he's part of it, he's in the books, but he was not like, I don't think he was officially a member of X Factor. Now Guido's kind of shown up since then, although he has not had a humongous career, but I think one of the things that's so fun about Guido is he's just got a really big, weird personality. He's from New York and he's very Italian, but he's also like this very, you know, gregarious, upbeat, like big energy. Hey guys, where are we going? What's going on? Very friendly. And he can get a little bit, you know, aggressive too, but he's got an energy that I think is very interesting on this team, which is why I liked him so much, because a lot of these characters, Havoc, Polaris, some of the more serious X-Men characters, all this pathos and like, oh, I'm Magneto's daughter. Oh, I'm Cyclops' brother. Oh, my life is so difficult. And then on the other side, you got this other guy's like, hey everybody, let's go have pizza, right? So like that was fun. Guido was fun. Then he joined Multiple Man in the X Factor Investigation series and was part of the Noir Detective Team, which is one of my favorite runs of comics. Really, really, really good. And he's a great part of why. And he was really good friends with Multiple Man, which was good. He's like one of him and Multiple Man have had some books recently, but it is like one of the lesser known good friends in Marvel who kind of stick around together and kind of have grown. Kind of like Wonder Man and Beast, where you're like, these guys aren't, you know, super high profile characters but every so often they'll bump into each other like hey we're good friends right yeah we get along well together okay and that's kind of guido like multiple man does get very serious when he takes over x factor investigations and guido is just his friend who we can bounce ideas off of who maybe goes and does things he's not supposed to sometimes but like the pair have a good energy beyond that i like the guido takes this X-Men thing kind of seriously, but not fully seriously, right? Like Guido is there and he's part of the X-Men, but also when they're like, what's your nickname? He's like, I don't know, strong guy. Everybody else there has like Polaris, Havoc, Wolfsbane, like these ultra serious names. And he's kind of there like, no, I'm a superhero. It's kind of fun. I'm gonna pick a superhero name. He also has a really good costume. I love the shoulder pads. And I like his design. He's got a really weird design. And it comes from his powers, which we'll get to. Now, his Marvel Snap card is if all the cards in your hand are gone, if your hand is empty, so like if Modoc, say, clears your hand, then his card becomes more powerful. The problem is a Marvel Snap that almost never happens. Having a deck that can do that consistently is pretty pointless. Like, there are far better four drops that give you as much energy, but for less work than him. There's even ones like Sentry where it's like he's a 410 but he creates an evil for negative 10 but like there's a lot of easy ways to get rid of that. It's like how are you going to get rid of all of the cards in your hand? It's just, it's just tough. And they've been working with him you know they tried at one point to buff him a little bit by giving him 
you get more points, I believe, but that didn't really play out either. It's, it's tricky, but you wonder, okay, well, what is this guy's deal then? Why is he, why is it that when all his friends are dead, he gets more powerful? Like, is he, and you could say part of this comes from the fact that he was Lord of Hell for a while, but I don't think that's what they're going for. I think it's supposed to be a kind of inverse, like, less cards. He's kind of like the opposite of Devil Dinosaur, but in that, I think, Devil Dinosaur is supposed to synergize with Moon Girl, who creates extra cards in your hand. Like, I'm not sure who he's supposed to synergize with. He doesn't synergize particularly well with Multiple Man, but he synergizes well with Modok. But the problem is, then you need a turn six card that you can play. And yeah, you could do America Chavez, but it's like, I don't know. I, that just, that deck just doesn't work. Like, he doesn't synergize well with Polaris. So maybe he will synergize well with Havoc, but he really shouldn't because him and Havoc don't get along. Like, if anything, he could synergize with, like, Monet, although they didn't really get along either. Like, Siren, some of the other X-Factor investigation characters. But it just it just doesn't work. It really is, like, he synergizes well with MODOK. That's pretty much it. So, you're thinking, well, what's his power then? Just, he has to get really strong, right? Because he's a strong guy? Well, kind of. His power is a little bit more complicated than that. It's in the same class as guys like Bishop and Sebastian Shaw. There's a lot of characters that have some version of this. His deal is he can absorb any kinetic energies like like the hulk can punch him and he can take it he can get hit by a car the difficulty is he has to expend that energy right like he needs to punch something else just as hard as he got punched otherwise his body will explode that's why he's so big and strong it's like he like lifted weights because i believe as a kid he got hit by bus and absorbed that hit but then didn't know that he needed to dissipate that energy so it just stuck around with him and he became a big weird you know triangle man now the question it becomes all right let's say we can't work with the numbers right we can't make strong guy like a four six plus ten if you clear the hand like that could work but it's still not going to make people play him and i also wouldn't say that's too true to the character so knowing what his superpower is he absorbs kinetic energy and redirects it how could you synergize strong guy to make him a a more effective card B, maybe more fun to play, and C, truer to the comic character, so that Strong Guy is not the perennial, like, worst card in the game. And I was thinking about this, because he has to absorb energy and then redirect it, right? I think one thing you could do, I don't think there's a character that does this yet. There's no card that is this, but I think you could play him kind of like a reverse sunspot, where he is in your hand, and every unspent energy you have in your hand, he gets points for it, right? I don't know what power he has to be though that's the tricky part i don't think we can do like a it can't be like a four power maybe he's like a three yeah maybe that's what it is maybe he's a three zero then you get a three three but if you just get unlucky or if you're like trying to synergize with she hulk a character that he should work well with then you could get this character up pretty high without doing any work and your opponent wouldn't know you have it because you aren't like you're absorbing this unused energy and then unleashing it on that board that is a way to do it i think you could do something like that or you could have him be a very strong like very you know big card put make him a 412 or something but if you don't play him something bad happens i don't know if there's cards like this the only one i can think of that kind of works this way you have like some cards like mbaku who plays from out of your hand like he'll he'll come out of your deck same with angel you have black cat who automatically uh, destroys the card or discards the card at the beginning of every turn so she only sticks around for one turn you could do something like that with guido where like maybe it's that he is a four cost card but if you don't play him by turn four he discards that card gets discarded Ooh, okay so he's a he's a let's say ooh, let's call him a three seven or something like that like a high three drop and that's consistent with like Maximus and Black Cat, who are also high three drops with a negative attached to them. His negative is if you don't play him by turn three, I don't think you you can't. You, it has to be something like cannot draw him on turn six. See, this is more complicated, I think, than this needs to be. I mean, okay, so he absorbs energy, right? This could be like a super scroll situation or a you know hazmat situation so you could do it like where if characters on your side of the board are going to lose power strong guy gains that power back so kind of like no except it's not based on cards that are destroyed or anything like that it's power that is taken away so for instance you would be a great counter to high evolutionary which i think everyone wants right now you know like so that so that power that is Taken away would go somewhere. He'd have to be strong on his own. I'd put him at like a 3-6 maybe. 
So like even if you don't have characters getting you know zapped by power a lot, he's still a pretty good card. But if you do have characters that are losing their power a lot, it's like man, you better stop doing that other person I'm playing with because that is going to be bad when strong guy shows up. Yeah, you know what? I think I like that the most. I don't think there's a card that does this yet either. He has to get stronger every like point of negative energy on your side of the board strong guy absorbs and gets one power from now your cards would still get that negative energy but at least you have a strong guy who can kind of balance it out i like that there's a part of me that does like the him exploding thing though okay he's a three seven i don't know why i like three seven so much but i think that's that's the number of decided he is he's a three seven you play him on the board at the end of that turn either you just your cards on that side of the board are destroyed or your opponent's cards on that side of the board are destroyed it's one or the other right kind of play him like um that one I don't remember which location this is, but that one where just whoever is losing gets dies. So like he is worth a lot of power, but he can also be huge liability because if you play him on a side of the board that you're really trying to build up and you've got something special going on with, and then your opponent's able to play something else there and then beat you, then it's like, well, I just wasted that card and whoever was on that side with him. Yeah, that could be something. Yeah, because it's like there's only so many cards or there's only so many ways in this game that a character can get hurt or damaged or something like that, right? Like it is things like the way Hazmat or Cyclops will take energy away. It would have to be something like that. Yeah, I think that's what I would do with him. If I could redesign Strong Guy, I like both of my ideas. I think the first one, having him be in your hand, Sunspot, a three cost, but will absorb all of the energy you haven't played, I think could be pretty cool. He'd synergize well with She-Hulk. He'd synergize well with, like, Sunspot, which would make sense because they're kind of friends, kind of. He's a new mutant. X-Men, we have a connection. I can't think of a way we could synergize well with Multiple Man. Besides him being a movement card, he could be a movement card. You just have him be a 3-6 who moves the next card played to the right. Or something so he would he would work a little bit differently and also he'd synergize well with multiple man but something tell me what other cards he's like friendly with he'd be friendly with like mephisto we're never gonna get that card probably there's no line with cheney we have dazzler but nothing else that like that yeah i think that's it i think it's so so i think it's the negative energy thing i think that's the best one although like we have bishop who gets more powerful based on how many cards you're playing we don't have a sebastian shaw yet so we could do one gets one, one gets the other. So Strong Guy and Sebastian Shaw both have either this card gets one energy for every unspent energy while this card is in your hand. So you can't, you if you don't draw it on one, you're not getting the energy from one. The same way that Sunspot, if not played early, doesn't get that. Although you could do it the other way where he just is worth it. So you could draw him on turn six and be like, oh, cool. He's like a five. He's like a, you know, two five or whatever. We'll, we'll have to figure that out. But there's that idea the kind of battery and then there's the other idea which i think is better where it's any negative damage inflicted on cards on your side is positive powers up strong guy i think that would have to be it that would make him like i said like a sponge that can counter high evolutionary and cards like that and plenty of like locations there's so many locations with, like negative three negative two well i don't know if he would counteract the negative done to him maybe we'll figure this out ben ben bro call me uh from second dinner but yeah we got to do something about strong guy because he's a great character he's fun he's a good x-man he's never been in the movies he's in the show briefly i don't think he speaks but he's cool and he's been in some really good comics some runs that are great and he is currently the worst marvel snap card nobody plays him i can't even come up with a deck and i love him and i love modok and i still can't do it so i think that's how you'd have to do it something like that so yeah uh, give me free gold. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.